Michael Gomez got to go. Say hey. Say hello. Say Michael Gomez got to go. Say hey. Say hello. Michael Gomez got to go. People are generally really, really worried about what's happening in education. And it's not from a personal perspective, it's those of us who have children. We teach and I'm a school governor. I feel very worried about the next generation, to be quite honest, that they could lose out. Teaching till 68, I think if you're a reception teacher with four and five year olds, I don't think that's humanly possible. I don't think it's right. And I don't think four and five year olds should be taught by somebody who's 68, who's not fresh, who's not energetic and actually could be a health and safety risk to those children. When I'm 68, can I really teach the way I teach now? It will it be good for the kids? That's what I'm concerned about. The kids mean so much to me. On top of the fact that our con contributions for pensions have gone up, we have teachers working an average of 60 hours a week. I get paid for 25 hours and I do at least 70 hours a week plus. I have no family life, there's no work life balance. And whilst the kids I work with mean the world and are everything, I'm also a parent. And my three children have missed out on what they're entitled to from their mum because of what I've given to my work. And enough's enough. I'm a chair of governors of a school in Hounslow that is out of London allowance and um, many of our young staff are living up to an hour and a half away from work because they can't afford to live in London. A lot of teachers leaving the profession within the first three years of it. I just don't think it's sustainable at the moment. We have to fight and we have to make change. <laughs> lot more what I would call sort of hyper accountability measures so measures that are about not trusting teachers but getting teachers to constantly prove over and over again that they're doing a job and it means that we end up doing lots of tick box exercises lots of replication of data things like that that we don't think are for the benefit of the children that we teach. The new national curriculum that's coming in in September is about teaching them facts, the kings of England, etc, etc. Very useful, I guess. But that's not going to prepare them for the 21st century and beyond. It's based on kind of what I call a chalk and talk method. An idea that children are kind of empty vessels just to be filled full of so-called facts and knowledge rather than the kind of um, liberatory educational experiences that we want to give to children that are based around creativity, around developing and fostering a really deep love of learning that sets them up for later life. They see education as something for their own elite. It's not to do with the average person. They're not interested. I work within the special needs. If you're a special needs child, forget it. You're going to be at the bottom of the heap. I think they just need to listen to more teachers and get into schools and see what children we're dealing with, what children want, um, and stop making it all about a political agenda. Michael Gove wants schools to be units of profit. He wants to make money out of our children's education. He wants to do away with state education altogether and to dismantle the comprehensive state education system. Michael Gove has never been serious about negotiations. He's always said that he's prepared to talk to the unions, but only about implementing his policies. And that's not proper negotiation. He's not actually attending the talks. He has uh, civil servants attending the talks with the unions, trying to just push things through. He's not offering anything that will really make a difference to people's working lives or about improving education. And that's why thousands of us are out on strike today. trying to force through longer hours, shorter holidays um, and more administrative tasks on teachers uh, that didn't exist before through the STRB, the School Teachers Review Body. Um, for the first time ever, I think, the STRB refused uh, an education minister's uh, suggestions and so he's been stopped. So what we have achieved by taking the last lot of strike action is some slowdown in the attacks that have been made on education. Get go back! All out! Get go back! All out! Get go back! All out! Get go back! If anything, despite the fact that we aren't striking with the other unions today, there's a bigger, there's a bigger feeling about the event. There's lots of discussion about escalation, about what that might look like. Um, there'll be a conference coming up 
in Easter it's our conference. Escalation will definitely be discussed there and voted on there. I think that we need to have a, a sustained strike actually, you know, we need to have um, we need to have escalations in the action effectively because the message needs to get through that we're gonna win, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna back down until we win and we need to get that message out there really strongly I feel. If you do more than one day in a row, it can have a more long-lasting effect. Idealistically, you don't want to strike at all. You want the fact to be that um, there is some kind of compromise. And actually, over the last couple of years, the strikes have formed some kind of compromise. What I mean by that is that uh, people retiring now would be on about a grand a year extra than if we hadn't have done it a couple of years ago. If you, if you were retired for 30 years, that's 30 grand. We've got to escalate this campaign and make sure that Michael Gove is forced to the negotiating table and is forced to come up with things that really make a difference to education. So I think we will be back on strike next term. We need to escalate the action. We need a calendar of action. We need a fighting union. We can't stop here. We can't lose any momentum. We are not going to win unless we continue the strike action. All out to get go out. All out to get go out. All out to get go out. in a primary school and I test my children every four weeks. And does this help them? I'm not so sure. Tests at five that label children as failures and serve no purpose. Tests at ten that are heavily prepared for, with hours spent drilling facts into children that secondary schools do not care about. And most adults who struggle to meet For those students who struggle to meet their targets, I find myself being pressurised to put on catch-up sessions and extra lessons, regardless of whether they have any positive impact. This creates stress for teachers and students and would never encourage passion or curiosity for the subject. It means more marking, inputting data, waiting for moderation and then analysing the data. This is time I would actually rather spend teaching. I have my respect for a system that flies in the face of basic educational research, which demonstrates that individuals make progress at different rates. This inflexibility makes a mockery of a system that should have student achievement at its heart. And with teachers pay being linked to performance, this system will only increase the pressure put on children. The idea that our children are failing the phonics test when children in Scandinavia and all over the place don't even start school till they're seven, when unaccountable corporations and other shady outfits are taking our money, taxpayers' money, to set up schools, and as we know, they then often fail to, to offer the education that they promise they'll deliver. We know that it's time to stand up for education. So when Mr Gove rides roughshod over every child's right to a qualified teacher, and then fails in one of his key duties, which is to make sure that every child has a school place, we know it's time to stand up for education. In my opinion, good and outstanding teachers are well rested, have a bond with their children, and have time to converse with them. The workload survey has shown that in three years since Michael Gove has been in power, on average, primary teachers work 10 hours more a week. Will this keep increasing? Who will want to stay in this demanding profession if this is going to continue? Working the long hours that we do affects our family lives and any outside interests and in the of pursuing. We become unable to exercise that curiosity that we're trying to develop and sustain in our students. The National Assembly might have stood down the strike action today if we'd got any of these, they were to publish the existing pay points, say that portability is normal, and tell every school that they have to budget for every teacher getting pay progression at the end of the year. They said no to all of those things. So when you hear that there's progress in the talks, I'd like you to tell me what progress you conceivably think there is. We need to make sure that the campaign continues, and it will continue. The executive will be meeting to bring forward ideas to MUT conference. And in the week of two major funerals, I'm sure that, that we must conclude 
uh, with the words, don't mourn, organise. Let's carry on to the work.